everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something I think is overlooked quite often in 3D resin printing, and that is proper ventilation. Hey everybody, so as you probably saw in the last video, if you haven't, take a look at it. I recently purchased a Piopoli Phenon L. It came in, I set it up. There's an unboxing and first look video. Um, but pretty quickly, I realized I was going to have a bit of a problem. My wife is very sensitive to odors, to smell, especially chemical smells. And this being such a large printer, uh, it was kicking out a lot of resin fumes and any large scale printer is going to do this. This isn't like a knock on the Piopoli. Uh, I love the printer so far. I'm having a great time with it. More on more videos later. But she was having a serious problem with the smell. I started printing a helmet and about uh, four hours into it, six hours into it, it smelled throughout the house, she thought. And then later, as it reached about 20 hours, I could smell it. And it was pretty strong, again, because you've got this gigantic vat of resin, uh, you know, two jugs full, three jugs full, heating and hardening, and that was just kicking out a lot of odor. Again, not a knock on the Phenom, my uh, Elegoo Mars tiny printer, uh, same thing, but it's such a small uh, vat, the smell wasn't that, that bad. Bigger vat, more resin, bigger smell. So I drew up a some plans and did some research and constructed a ventilation booth. Now the thing is huge, obviously, because the, the Pianopoli Phenon L is huge, but it's what was necessary. So let's take a look at the video on how I put that together. Okay, so first things first, we need to cut up this quarter inch piece of plywood. This is a full sheet, and I'm very lucky to have a father who has pretty much every tool under the sun in this massive table saw bench to be working on. So now we're just gluing things up and you might notice through this that my father is doing a lot of the work. He doesn't let me touch power tools. Uh, even though I worked for his construction company for quite a while, I can build furniture. He, uh, I don't know what it is, but he thinks I'm gonna cut my fingers off or something. So he's just gluing up the backside here using about as much glue as I do, which is quite a bit. We use some clamps and now it's time to use a piano hinge for the door because this door is really tall and two single hinges really wouldn't cut it. We needed a piano hinge to keep things rigid. And yes, that is me. He let me do a little bit of work. Now it is time to actually go through and drill some holes for this back fan. And this is going to bring air into the printer. Now here is the fan that will suck the fumes and heat out. It's going to go through that collar, into that tube, and into a carbon filter. So I'm going to, oh, there we go. It's hard when you're trying to shoot these yourselves. <laughs> the camera fell, and that's why it looks like that. So here is the bracket that actually holds the blower fan. Now the tube is coming out of that collar, and then it's going into the fan unit. This is the fan that's sucking the fumes out, and it's going to go down. You see the arrow there into some more tubing, and then into this carbon filter. So there it is. I tightened up all the clamps, and the fumes are going to go right down into there. There's the air intake to keep the machine nice and cool. So really, really happy with how this thing turned out. I think everything fits together. Now we just need to put it in place. And again, I was lucky enough to have my son help me out. Again, this is a very, very heavy printer, so have some help doing this. And of course, remember to take out your vat of resin. And now we're gonna put the case up. It is very light, because I used quarter inch plywood, and those little one by one shims in there are very light as well. But it does take up some space. So putting it in, I did realize I made a bit of a mistake. It is about two inches too narrow. It fits in there, but I'm having a tricky time getting my USB stick in. And there's my son, again, still helping. Very happy that he stuck around. And of course, he's got a ham it up for the camera. Practice Safe Sex, Danny Duncan, one of his favorite YouTubers. But overall, it fits in pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the carbon filter. I had to take that apart when I drove it over in my dad's truck. And put on some of the controls. So this bottom control controls the fan, the bring the air in to the printer. The top one is the controller for the blower, the, the sucker motor that will suck the fumes out need to connect the control cable to the blower and it is all set. I'm going to do some cable cleanup 
And here it is, the final case, the final construction. Super happy with how this turned out. No fumes, it looks really, really cool. So it was super fun to work on this project with my dad. I didn't really get to do a whole lot, but sort of help and tell him where things needed to go through most of it. But again, a fun process. Now, the cabinet itself is working perfectly. I have been printing helmets and weapons and figures and everything, and I have no odor throughout the house. My wife has not complained, which is the most important part. Who cares if I could have smelled it? She doesn't smell it anymore. She's happy. I'm happy. The other thing I was worried about, which was airflow and temperature, I put a thermometer in there, a temperature gauge, and the air is not that much warmer than it is on the outside, so it isn't heating up in there. That back fan really, really worked. So, again, super happy. This is gigantic, but you can build the same thing smaller uh, or even makeshift something with a cardboard box or something like that. But I would definitely look into ventilating a machine. It's toxic. Uh, the smell can permeate your home, and something like this can really save the day. So everything I used uh, product-wise and wood-wise, they're in the description below. They are, of course, affiliate links. It helps out the channel. If you click on those, I would appreciate it because then what happens is, if you're going to buy the things, I get a little bit of money, and I can buy resin. And that's what I'm going to be buying a lot of with this Piopoli because it's huge. So again, guys, I really appreciate it. I hope you liked the video. I've got a lot more coming out on that machine and still on my FDM printers. I'm printing out quite a bit of stuff right now and I'm really looking forward to doing videos on those as well. All right, guys, thanks a lot. I will see you next week. Take it easy and have a great day. A Panopoly. Oh man, I can't say Panopoly. Panopoly? Panopoly? Oh my God. Piopoli. Now I know how to say this word. I've said it a million times. Piopoli. Piopoli. Okay. Piopoli.